In this video, we are going to see how you can trigger MA2 commands. And since that command is really simple to use, I'm going to show you how this command works by going through our very first example plugin together. So let's take a look at the example code first um, and let's actually see it in action first. So go ahead and copy and paste it over to your show file, select a bunch of fixtures and then run the plugin to see it in action. So uh, command control C to copy it and then um, go release Example plug in number one, control A and control V to insert it. I have an executor selected here, but you don't need to do that. I have a bunch of fixtures that I have selected here. And now I'm running this plugin and it's asking me for the target executor number. I'm just going to hit please um, to go with the currently selected one. Target executor label. Um, I don't know, example one, um, go release trigger example. Dimmer, I want this to be set to a hundred. All right, fade in, no fade in please. And then fade out five seconds. So it's really pronounced. And now we have an executor here, freshly minted. And I'm just going to clear the programmer. And now when I hit go release on this one, we can see the values jumping to 100 and then fading out over 100, um, over five seconds, actually not 100 seconds. And uh, the whole executor releases itself, which is great, of course. So what's cool here is that we can actually really quickly with this plugin create um, little looks that we can then trigger kind of like, um, I don't know, one shot samples or something. So, you know, I have something here, let's just call this main dimmer 100. Yes, fade in, nope, fade out. Let's go with the free second. And it's really cool because this really makes it very fast to create these little one-off looks. So, you know, not something you wouldn't be able to do with, um, you know, macros or just by hand, but it's one of these little tools that's really great um, to build a plugin for. All right. Now, let's go through the code step by step. Waiting for the script to run its course to the way that I actually wanted to go to. I think this example plugin is great, by the way, because it shows you the real benefit of plugins. You don't need to perform black magic with your plugins, completely hacking your console into doing things it was never fully designed to do. But instead, you know, plugins are much more useful, I think, when you use them to speed up your content creation. In this case, for example, we're simplifying and speeding up workflow step that would usually take us anywhere between five and six distinct steps. And it would require us to open up the options of an executor we're creating um, just to be able to assign this executor mode. Nothing crazy in tone, but these little steps, you know, they add up uh, if you want to create a handful of these kinds of dimmer bumps. So let's take a look at the code step-by-step step to understand how it works and see a great practical example of how you can trigger MA2 commands from your plugins. So you will notice two things here. First of all, um, all of the inputs, they are all stored to local variables. Uh, if you don't already know how important that is, please go back and watch the video on local and global variables. And the second thing is that I'm providing these default values in every one of my text inputs. That's something that I always try for. And I think it greatly improves the quality of your plugins. Um, because like that, it's really easy for users to quickly hit please on all of the default options. So when I use this plugin often, I um, often only want to change the fade out so I can leave my hand over on the num block and simply hit enter um, or please on the console. And then kind of, you know, know after a while how often I have to press hit, um, how often I have to press please in order to get to that one step where I actually want to input, um, you know, the, the custom fade out value. So this is really another great tip for building interactive parts 
um, in your plugins, make sure that it's really fast to, to use. And by that, I mean, you know, really try and provide a default value for every input and also try to rely on numbers as much as you can so that people don't even have to get out the keyboard on the physical console to use your plugin, which makes it a lot faster. All right, lines eight through 10 show you how I like to deal with executor selection. Um, so more often than not, I already have my target executor selected, so I don't have to select it again. And I'm simply including this text currently selected as the default input, um, and that's what I'm matching against. So, you know, you can see here, I'm even assuming that, um, I mean, I'm, I'm essentially saying if there's something other input than this right here, then I'm going to select that executor again. But this is really important because I think it also makes it a lot faster for plugin users to use this. Notice how in this case, by the way, we are simply using the select executor command from MA2. And we can see here that we use the double dot operator that we already saw in the um, video on dealing with text to actually combine both the select executor command and then the um, executor that was uh, entered as part of user input. Also notice, by the way, this space so that, you know, it says select executor and then the target executor number. And just as a reminder, in this case, the spaces around the double dot, this is something I like to do to make it more readable. Um, but what you should not forget about is sort of this space in the command so that the command keywords are actually, and it's kind of funny because this is actually my most common mistake when I'm building commands like that, uh, sort of forgetting to put the space in between the different parts of the commands. All right, now let's just go through the remaining lines of this plugin, which are also very easy to explain. This is the part where I have the most, uh, or where I actually have all the information that I need from the user to just go through with all the commands that are needed. Uh, so we can, um, Actually, this, this is kind of cool because from this point on, we assume that the correct executor has been selected, either the one that the user already has executed or selected, or you know this was executed and it had the correct um, you know, executor selected. So now we just go ahead and create something on that executor slot, right? So in line 12, you can see that for this plugin to run, we need a fixture selection and we simply set those fixtures to whatever value was specified earlier. Then we store uh, the values in um, the executor slot and we don't want to bother the user with any confirmation windows and that's why we're using this slash NC um, value. Again, this is not anything in Lua but this is actually just regular command syntax from MA2. Um, also, another another one of those points where you know we make sure that um, using this plugin is really smooth and um, you know actually doesn't take much input from the user or much thinking about it. All right, and then lastly, we select uh, the go um, trigger to the freshly created queue and assign it the queue mode release, and that's um, you know not complicated stuff here. But in general, um, what we do is we just simply are pretty smart about asking for the right values and then running through the commands that are needed. All right, lastly, we add the fade out as off time. And let me just pause right here. If you ever worked with off time before, you know that uh, to set the off time of an executor, you have to edit the executor, then exit that editor again. And then you have the off time available on the encoders. And again, it's not crazy black magic, but it's just, you know, you being able to sort of um, reduce all of these different tiny little steps that add up over time and make this whole um, experience so much more smoother. All right, we conclude the plugin by labeling the executor. And in this case, we're using the system variable selected executor um, to label the correct selected executor. And if we don't um, recognize that system variable, um, if you don't recognize that system variable, go ahead and enter list var on the command line and you will get a list of all the system variables that you are able in to use in your MA2 commands. Lastly, the most important part for your plugin to work is that we retain, return the main function of your plugin. Um, so that allows MA2 to run your plugin every time you hit that tile in the plugin pool or just go, um, you know, and execute it some other way. And 
And there you have it, your very first example plugin, uh, you know, from top to bottom. I can't really stress this enough. The most value you get out of your plugins, in my opinion, is to create all of these little helper tools that automate your most often used and most time consuming workflow steps. Ideally, your plugins don't serve as a content or a show creators. That should still be you, but um, your very personal way of creating shows, um, you know, should be sort of supported by these plugins to make um, your typical steps a lot faster. And that's our first example plugin. Again, no big black magic here, just, um, you know, a lot more efficient way to create this very type of content.